hello and welcome to Sanguini Linguini, aka the Pasta Dungeon of Doom. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball! This particular run was done on a timed 19 key, but this route will work on most key levels. Venthers have a really cool ability in this dungeon that activates lanterns throughout, giving your team a stack of Sinful Boon, which does 5% extra damage for you and 5% extra healing that you take. You used to be able to do tricks with spiders on these lanterns and like different bags and tools and toys, but uh, Blizzard detected fun, so they fixed it. Here is the route we use. It requires two skips, so either have a rogue or have your team take multiple invis pots. Do not just bring two invis pots because if something goes wrong, you can no longer go invis. Go ahead and pause here if you would like to look at this route more. Here are my soulbinds and talents for this week's affixes. Go ahead and pause here if you would like to look at these as well. However, keep in mind, I have only been playing this game for around seven to eight months, so take what I do with a grain of salt. We start with a double pull to the lantern because we do have a Venther Frost Mage and we like to get those stacks. Be careful though with bursting stacks. As you're killing the mobs, it's good to kill them slowly and keep an eye on those bursting stacks so you don't all die. No, 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 no. <laughs> this next pack has a mist answer. As the tank, I stand in one spot and I will strafe left or right during echoing thrust and then move back to the same spot, which keeps that echoing thrust in the same spot so it doesn't hit any of my melee. Make sure you avoid any of the traps on the ground as they hurt really, really badly. This next pull has a baby blue boy and a tick. The tick is going to cast Engorge, which needs to be kicked, so just rotate kicks in your team. If it gets too many stacks, it will burst and wipe your whole team on death. Blue boy has a headbutt ability, which you just need to use a personal like Fiery Brand or Demon Spikes on. We skip this next room and take on these two big packs, but not together. The first big tick pack, make sure you are rotating kicks. I would recommend downloading Omni CD and having someone on your team call rotations here. As Demon Hunter, I use Sigil of Silence and then Chains and then Fear, and then I'll call for my Boomy to use Beam or my Monk to kick them or something. Monks do things and then things are silenced. The pack after is again a bunch of ticks, but also a blue boy, so make sure you're using your personals whenever he does a headbutt on you. Now you are on to the first boss, the big blue boy himself. He does a hungering drain, which needs to be kicked. Just rotate it throughout your team. He also does a vicious headbutt, which is a tank buster. So use a personal defense. I like to rotate my meta, my baby meta, which is fell devastation, my blood spattered and my fiery brand for this. Blue boy also does a juggernaut rush where he will target one person in your group and everyone else needs to stand in front to block it before he runs into that person. When Blue Boy does Severing Smash, it's going to make an orb pop out of everyone. So you want to have your DPS and your healer back away from the boss so the orbs are as far away as possible. As the tank, I take my orb first and then continue tanking. I keep the boss away from the other orbs so my healer can grab the orbs when they have cooldowns ready because when you grab the orb, it does an AoE to your team. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? You just rinse and repeat this and eventually he will die or you will die. This next room has two casters that I pull with the big room. However, you can do this into two chunks to make it safer because kicking is very important here. These spells hurt and curse of suppression silences your healer or anyone on your team. So you have to make sure you're rotating your kicks correctly because if these casts go off, you will wipe. In the hallway is a sentinel. You want to point the sentinel away from your group as the tank because it cleaves and it will cleave your melee. It also casts Fracture, which is just a move feet mechanic, and everyone can either strafe left or right to avoid the pillar that comes out of the ground. The Grand Overseer packs can be some of the most dangerous. He will put chains on your team, which you need to move away a certain distance to break. Otherwise, you get a stack that reduces your healing and your damage done. The casters will do a Rack Soul that also needs to be interrupted. After the two Overseer packs, I pull this entire room to the Lantern to get the most stacks possible for our team, and we need to make sure we rotate kicks here because they are all casters. And as Demon Hunter, we now take increased magic damage. Woo! After the pride, we invis to the circle gauntlet. I always make sure I kick binding shackles first since I'm the first one pulling the warden or our melee will die. And we just rotate kicks here on him. The next packs throughout the gauntlet have Doubts. The doubts place mistrust on the floor and you just need to kite out of it. Some of these packs also have ghouls. The ghouls are tank busters. So I grab aggro and I get the heck out of there. Run. Kite, kite, kite. I use chains, I use slows, we use cardboard, we use trees, anything to stay away from them. 
If you're not taking any damage, you're tanking the best you can. Our second boss is the Executor. You want to avoid the red orb that moves on both sides of the hallway. When you first pull the boss, it will move on the inside of the circle. And then after it goes past, you want to move inside of the circle. When you see it move along the outside of the circle, then you move to the outside of the circle and vice versa. He will cast Castigate. That's a mouthful, cast Castigate. He will cast Castigate on a player and you want to stay out of that circle and it does high damage. So healers want to focus on healing this player. He also drops a manifestation, which is an ad that you want to kill quickly and then move because it drops a pool on the ground. After the Executor is dead, we pull more of the gauntlet until we have 75% of trash and then we drop down. The third boss is Beryllia. She does an iron spikes on the tank, which hurts really badly. So make sure you save a personal for this, like Fiery Brand, Meta, Baby Meta, or Blood Spattered. Supremacy is an ability where she spawns orbs. You need to grab the orbs, and if you don't grab a certain amount, you will die. We rotate immunes here, especially on Tyran Week, so players can grab more orbs as needed. For example, our Frost Mage might ice block, or a Paladin might bubble. On Fort Weeks as tank, I only need to take one orb. On Tyran Week, it's a little more scary, so I take two orbs as tank. After Supremacy, she does Torment, which places swirlies on the ground. If you stand in the swirlies, you're probably just dead, especially in higher level keys. So don't walk in them and don't walk on other people in your team. After Borrelia is dead, you will grab the sword at the top of the stairs. We pull the first trash in this room and then we skip the rest using invis or rogues. You are now at the gauntlet. If you put even a baby toe on this bridge, the gargoyles that continuously spawn will keep spawning and start. So make sure you are ready to start this gauntlet before you even put a pinky toe on this bridge. Daddy Call is sitting here waiting for us and Gorians are just gonna keep on coming. Whenever she drops Gloom Squall, you drop your sword on the ground and everyone in your team needs to stand in this glowy circle to stay safe. If this trash starts to hurt, especially this second pack here, I suggest kiting and kiting and kiting and hoping your team has slows, you're using chains, you're using anything you can to stay alive, including cardboard or trees. For some of this trash, we like to pull it to the lantern for the stacks. It's mainly the wicked casting group and we make sure to rotate interrupts on that. If you manage to get through this gauntlet, which is very taxing, you get to a pack with a giant sentinel and skirmishers. These skirmishers are tank busters and they hurt really badly. So either kite them like I do, I just don't even like to take damage from them, I take aggro and run away, or save personals for it. Or if you're a bear tank or a monk tank, I don't know, just stand in stuff. It seems like you get to just stand in stuff, must be nice. Finally, you have a pack of huntsmen and puppies in the room before call. You are now on call, the very last boss in Sanguine Depths. She does a Wicked Gash, which you can dodge by moving last minute when she's heading towards you. You want to dodge this because it helps your healer and reduces the stacks on you that make you harder to heal. She also does a Blur ability where a bunch of statues spawn and they send out red beams. You want to not stand in the red beams and move to a safe spot once the red beam has gone off. Finally, she does Gloom Squall, which again, everyone moves in and you drop your shield and everyone stands in it. If you have a lot of melee on your team, I suggest standing right on her. That way they can continue to do dam while they're also in the mechanic safe. If you get her to 50.5%, congratulations, you win. And you've just completed what some consider to be one of the hardest dungeons in Shadowlands. If you like this guide, make sure you hit that subby sub button. I also stream live on Twitch. So if you wanna watch me attempt some 20 keys, mess around and memes live, I am on Twitch at Chaotic Katie. All right, that's all. That's Sanguine. Good luck out there in these trenches. Bye.